This episode was sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform for used photo and video kit. Visit MPB. Com. Hey folks, in this interview, we're going behind the scenes of a little company called Skyloom. This is Twitter. Welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, I have Dima Stiknik on the line from Ukraine. We're gonna be talking about Luminar Neo. This is the latest groundbreaking piece of software that is being crafted right now from within the company. I'm, I'm scooping everybody. I get a chance to sit down with Dima and talk from, and get the, get the scoop from the horse's mouth about why this software exists, who it's for, who it's not for, what's in it, all that stuff. We're gonna talk about Luminar Neo, we're gonna talk about Luminar AI, maybe a little about Luminar 4, past, present, and future. Dima, welcome to the show. It's an honor to have you on. How are you doing? Hi, Frederick. I'm really glad to be on your show here, and I welcome everybody who are right now watching us and uh, sending very warm wishes because, uh, you know, we're working very hard to impress you guys with our new product, and uh, I hope you love it. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be good. I think, I think I've seen it. Uh, you, you and I met up... Um, we were in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, and I got a sneak peek on a laptop, but now we get a, a chance to kind of dive in properly into the software and see what it's all about. Let's, let's start the, the discussion with a, just a little bit of background on, on who Dima is and what your position within Skyloom is. You were there from the beginning. You were chief product officer. What does that mean? What, is, what does chief product officer mean in a company like Skyloom? Uh, that's very simple. Uh, it's the person who is responsible of all the product development or new technologies, or uh, responsible for all the product roadmaps and all the things that you hate or love in our products. <laughs> yeah. So that's me. So hi guys. <laughs> so you're me. you're the fall guy then. So when when. And there's a feature in the app that someone doesn't doesn't like or they love you're ultimately responsible right yeah absolutely so you can blame me or love me yeah i love it so you you know looking at the software let's let's roll back the clock a little bit and and go back to luminar four days and kind of bring us bring us on the timeline through the thinking so we started with luminar four well we started way before that we could go back to skyloom's mac fun days but we'll start with luminar four uh which kind of took the world by storm there was a ton of features in there that that people you know, gravitated to Luminar AI showed up. Um, features like sky replacement and all those things kind of took off, and other companies started copying what Skyloom is doing in a lot of ways. And now we have Luminar Neo. Put those in buckets for me: Luminar Four, Luminar AI, Luminar Neo. Who are those individual applications for? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that, that's pretty easy at least for me maybe not for other guys who are outside <laughs> but you know uh, having a complex product line is like uh, or uh, classical the way how we do the business <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, it's very simple uh, luminar 4 was for creative image editing but it was based on the old pipeline then we made luminar AI Luminar AI is different uh, application. It's actually designed for people who want to uh, simplify and make photo editing process very efficient because uh, all technologies are designed to be used with the templates when you can just simple uh, pick the, the best template and then customize for your result, uh, needed result. Mm -hmm. So this way you can get final result more easy and more fast and uh, it's not about complex uh, creative edits it's all about the quick results for like maybe social post or social media and uh, it's called luminar ai i appreciate so maybe we should call it a completely different name mm -hmm. but that was main purpose why we actually made luminar ai to simplify image editing with the new ai technologies uh, luminar neo is 
completely different product. It's designed to be ultimate creative machine. So uh, this product can uh, work with the new technologies much faster than old Luminar 4 or even Luminar AI. And it allows you to apply multiple instances of the same tool so you can create anything that you like or have any ideas, all of them can be implemented in Luminar Neo. So it's designed for people who want to do complex edits, use latest technologies, and create something that was not possible just before with the old tools. Now, when you... Uh, thanks for that, Dima. No, no when you... You know, most photographers, if not all photographers out there, are using Photoshop, you know, for a lot of their work for high end retouching and all that. How does how does how do you see as an architect for this software? How do you see that playing in in or playing with Photoshop? Is it you know, is it intended to you don't you know, replace Photoshop? You don't need Photoshop anymore for certain tasks or is it more of a plug in architecture where you, you round trip through Neo or AI and then come back to, say, Photoshop? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, when we can, when we design our product, we don't look at any competition because our idea is to bring value with the new technologies and new workflow. Because we focus not on competitors, but on the result that people want to achieve. We want to make it simple and efficient. I know a lot of other like photo editors are based on concept that actually was. Uh, first invented by Adobe in Photoshop and uh, a lot of other companies just copy the same approaches and they get a lot of complex editors out there. Our idea to use latest technology, wrap it in a simple and efficient interface, simplify as much as possible the workflow and get and give these technologies and this product to the people so they can express their creativity and achieve their results. Uh, but people can use uh, our product in a different way. They can use it as a standalone, then can use it as a plugin for Photoshop, or they can use it as a plugin for Lightroom. And uh, we don't have any kind of uh, restrictions how they use. Our goal is to bring new creative possibilities to a wider audience that can actually use our product for their creative projects. Yeah, and you, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to hear when, you know, like I said before, Skyloom and your team um, ostensibly created the space of sky replacement and those sorts of you know, better than human hands can do it type compositing efforts, right? With AI and all that. So now back in the day, you had to be a real good, a really good expert at channels and all this stuff in order to do an accurate convincing sky replacement. Now you can do it really quickly in a couple of clicks and it's almost a foregone conclusion. A lot of photographers I know even feel like they have to put a little note in their caption saying, hey, there was no sky replacement done on this shot because, because it's so convincing. I'm curious how you feel as the guy that's leading engineering over there about companies, you know, let's call it like Adobe, who came out with that feature after you did it. Were you, you know, were you proud that, oh, a, you know, a company like Adobe is emulating what we're doing, a much smaller company? Were you taken aback? Like, what was the feeling inside of Skyloom after Adobe released their sky replacement tech? Uh, you know, I'm, we're feeling like, okay, because uh, I know one wise man said uh, one time, like, all the features that you have in your product will fall just in two categories. First is the features that actually will fail. And the, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a screenshot the, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we'll yeah edit that. I'm sorry. Uh, you know that the, was awesome. You know what, what, what's the problem? You know what the problem is? <laughs> I, I, I actually see myself mirrored. Like, you see? I'm oh, a, yeah, yeah. You are I mirrored. Uh, and, I, and for me, it's very hard to actually understand in which way to move my hand to be like, perfectly aligned so like yeah uh, yeah so okay uh, like uh, wait here we go i can mirror you okay. you ready how about this okay now i mirrored you now you're perfect okay. uh oh perfect thank you so much <laughs> of, like okay from the beginning I, yeah. I i expected to have such a feature here like in my interface 
now I'm okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I, will I got it. <laughs> okay, I'll start. So, I'll ask you, you want to, you have the question. So yeah, just start and answer whenever you're ready, and I'll edit it in. Okay. So the, the so the uh, so the what was, the question uh, was. Uh, uh, you know, Adobe, you know, are you are you upset that they copy the feature or flattered? OK, uh, let one, two, three, like go. Mm -hmm. So I feel myself OK, because uh, I heard like one wise man said one time, all features that you get in your product will fall just in two categories, actually. And uh, the features that fail and the features that get copied by your competitors. So any good features will be copied. And I'm OK with this. And I think like uh, that's how the business works. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good sign. It means that we actually brought something good for like uh, this world. Yeah. So we're not really focused on the competition because our mission to bring new creative possibilities uh, for like people and we just have different roads with our competitors but you know any company which are focused only on competitors will never succeed them because they always trying to catch competitors our idea is to bring and create something new and really focused on the things that was never existed before never and uh, my idea is to bring this all ideas to life yeah, like my, my mission to bring all these uh, things to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that towards the end. Like, what what does the future hold for Skyloom and you know not only Luminar but but you know what other applications that you guys may be thinking of? But we'll talk about that towards the end. Um, I want to talk more about Neo though. So Luminar Neo is the the hot kid. It's not even launched yet. We're recording this. It's the beginning of February. It's February third, twenty twenty two, as we record this. Software's not out yet. First of all, what is the target for this software? Explain your like your. I know Dima is in the software, right? So as you create the software, who do you have in mind as the ultimate customer for it? Uh we get we get different segments of audience for whom actually we making the software and the main audience is the people who do creative image processing so not the guys who just like okay with uh, basic color corrections and people who want to get much more out of their photos like people who do landscape photography for example or professional photography who do some portrait retouching because we get some technologies for portrait editing which is our unique like portrait bokeh and then can people these people can combine these technologies all together to get results uh, faster or just uh, get something that they will not know how to do in the photoshop and the third audience is the people who actually want to achieve more but don't know how to do it in other software which may be more complex for them or if they don't have any uh, like uh, time to learn how to use it, we can call it hobby photographers. So there is these three main segments, and they can fall into smaller niches, like maybe you know only travel photographers, or for example like food photographers. But in general, it's for those people who really love and need to edit their photos to get much more out of the image that they get from camera. Yeah, yeah, without without having to build the skill set and do all these other I guess I remember I remember back in the day, you may remember this too, Dima. Back in the day there like in, in the in the age of like Photoshop two and three and and that when it was hard to even make a drop shadow. You remember? <laughs> so and there were these recipes online that you could go through in order to make make things look like metal or this or whatever and they called them channel operations and you had to you had to have a certain level of skill and desire in order to you know go down the, that path and fast forward if i had a time machine back from then to today and i looked at software like luminar neo i would think it's science fiction from this you know all the things that you can do in there i want to talk about what's in this app i know you're we're gonna do some screen sharing and do a demo of it but before we do that 
your your most like the feature that you are most proud of that you you can't wait for people to get in their hands what is it in luminar neo what can't you wait for people to see you know uh the biggest problem here you know when you have a child you can say like for what you love it you, you love it like <laughs> pick your and, favorite uh, child Dima. <laughs> not, not the, like big favorite like uh you know uh knowledge of your child for what you love it yeah so, uh, for, for, i mean uh there is no just one thing that i love I, I love all of them they are oriented for different uh needs for different customer segments uh but i can actually uh sh show you some of them like maybe first is a uh, relight ai yeah, just you want to you want to just dive in? Let's dive in and, and show it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring okay. your screen up. Uh, and for folks that are listening yeah. to this on the podcast, uh, just head over to thisweekinphoto.com um, or our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see this video that Dima is showing right now. So uh, that's the real real life. Yeah. Actually, what it does, it works like. Uh, virtual flashlight so we add a new light source to the scene and we can actually change the light angle of the scene because light of the scene because uh in most cases to get the perfect light you have to, have to bring your like flashlight or additional light sources with this technology in the post process with simple flat to the image taken with your DSLR camera we can actually do magical things, which is just not possible before. Uh, for example, I got this image, and it's like typical image taken like uh, in a studio. So uh, this Relight AR reconstr reconstruct depths from 2D image and add this virtual light source. Let me show you. Uh, let me increase brightness near. So there is a so I increase brightness and like we have to wait a little bit and then, um, yeah. When you increase works. brightness it's near, it is, it is increasing the brightness on objects that it feels are closer to the camera. Yeah, it looks like there's a light there. So there's a light it's in that room. <laughs> but take a look, it, it works like with the shadows and uh, it works like in 3D because we reconstruct depths. It's not, it's not like uh, just simple like 2d gradient it's mm -hmm. smart enough and take a look it you can move it and actually relight the scene as you wish oh my goodness wow. work uh in 3d space so like in just one tool you can just get from this to this and uh uh this tool can actually completely change the way how you edit photos or for example let me get another photo this one is very simple photo like okay that everybody can take it and i can call it like not so professional photo because there is no artificial light it's all natural light and it's not perfect it's early morning and like you have to do a lot of uh, retouch work here to get this image to a high quality level but with all with our tool we completely change the way how you edit photos so let me add, uh, let me add new virtual light source here. So I add new light source and see how it brighten up the foreground. Yeah. And I can play around with the depths like this, and I get like before and after. It's pretty accurate to work with the people and understand actually which uh, objects are closer to the camera and which objects are more far. But more than this, we have another unique uh, possibilities here uh, we can actually change the worms for foreground and background and uh, let me increase worms a little bit because uh oh, independently you can what, change you can change the, in, the the temperature or the color temperature of the foreground and the background independently yeah absolutely take a look <laughs> at this and then I can independently change the like brightness for background. I can make it a little bit darker. Oh, and yeah. what we got here, that's before. 
and it's after. That's actually what you can do. You don't have to do all this manual masking and uh, select all the people and use layers, for example, or complex like brushing here. It's yeah. fully automatic. So is the is so the mask? So so when you're making changes to the back background, is there a mask behind the scenes on the foreground elements and accurate masks so that you're not going to see any sort of bleed over, or is it targeting color values like? In this scene, the blue of the skies and the water back there, is it targeting those values or is it actual depth? It's depth map, actually. Uh, it's more complex, just, just simple mask. We actually take into account uh, bokeh. We take into account actually a whole scene perspective. So mm -hmm. we can add light source absolutely um, natural because our idea was to introduce new tool which can actually replace all your flashlight or artificial light sources that you have to bring with yourself to get perfect shot like uh, out outdoor and indoor for example yeah yeah uh, and let let me tell, uh, show another example here for example uh this shot is uh, like particular again sh uh, shot taken with the uh, natural light like classical wedding shot and uh, it's good but i think it can be better a little bit let me increase brightness it brightens near and take a look it's smart enough to see that like these persons are very close and you don't see any like edges or like a sharp transition between brightened area or and darkened area because we work in 3d we understand the perspective and apply it uh in a very smart way mm -hmm. and i can actually for example de even decrease brightness and get some like unique feel uh, about this for that was before and that's after so actually it's in most wow. cases just game changer for wedding photography for people who shot in natural light to and get Dima, perfect if you, if images if you wanted to say this is a great shot as is, but if you wanted to say, yeah, I want I want the background behind this couple to be cooler, so I want to I want to I want to remove some warmth from just the background. Are you able to do that? Yeah, yeah. Take a look at this. We make it a little bit cooler, yeah. uh, far back plan. Like that's. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Or, for example, like even people who shoot like landscapes, they can benefit from it. For example, like, you know, sometimes shadows and highlights can actually uh, make your photo worse. So uh, because it works in, 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 uh, um, in 2D. So when you open up the shadows, all the black areas are actually will be lightened up. But in most cases, it's not what you want to get. Uh, so with the relight tool, for example, you see this perspective on this beautiful street taken in Madrid. That's actually my shot. The weddings are not mine. So mm -hmm. let me try to increase brightness near, for example. You see, we open up the just brightness of the, like, it's like having a huge flashlight. Yeah. And then we can move depths in 3D. And you can actually do the balance. Or, for example, what you can do with this tool, it's really unique thing. For example, we can have a here negative light. Take a look at this. It looks like, uh, uh, you know, vignette in 3D. It can add a little bit of magical feelings here, like some mystery. So y you can actually adjust illumination of your scene in, in, in 3D. So it's most cases will change the way how you actually edit photos. Because when we use like classical, the old tools, they all designed to work in 2D. And actually when you want to get something uh, more complex, you have to spend a lot of time with masking, edge brushes and like uh, gradients to get what you want. But in most cases, people's brain works in 3D and when you see this image you, you still think it's uh, not a flat image it's 3D image so working in 3D is natural way how our brain thinks well, and I, I think this is a just the yeah I want to I understand this a little bit just because 
when I look at this, when I look at and hear you talk about, you know, depth maps and 3D, I instantly think, well, you know, my mirrorless camera doesn't, to my knowledge, doesn't capture depth information. My iPhone does, but my mirrorless camera does not capture depth information. How are you able to pull that data out of the file if it doesn't exist? Uh, actually, we generate it. So why it's called AI tool? We use just simple flat image and reconstruct depths from that flat to the image. That's the most tricky part. So uh, we used uh, hundreds of thousands images uh, with the depth data to train or uh, neural networks to be able to reconstruct depths in different like situations and light conditions to get a uh, good enough depth map to apply virtual light source. And then on, on top of this, we apply this virtual light source, which works perfect, perfectly uh, realistic in different light conditions. So you can actually apply this light source in 3D even for your uh, simple raw files. Because it works with raw files, it means that you can achieve full quality that was my next question. Is it, are, are we working from raw files here? And, and how does that, how does that work? Is it, are you, are you converting the, the raw files to a DNG format and then working from that? Or are you supporting basically most or all shipping mirrorless cameras that are generating raw, raw data? Uh, we have our own raw conversion engine. And we open uh, directly most of the supported uh, cameras, and we continuously update our software to support the latest cameras. Sometimes more fast, sometimes not that fast as we wish, but uh, we can work directly with raw files from your camera. For example, we support Fuji, Sony, Nikon, Canon. So all, all the major players are supported well, and uh, you can do whole image editing process just in our software love it love it okay let's uh let's dive back in what else what else is in neo there is still some cool things here so uh let's continue yeah. another thing that we have here is a tool called power lines removal and uh you know uh that's something that actually a lot of people uh want to do but never do because they just get bored in most cases power lines is not something that you make your image more beautiful in most cases it makes they makes or nature worse like they just ugly and when you like walk inside the beautiful city you like see the beautiful buildings and you your brain never gets attention to that power lines. When you take a photo, you see beautiful image of this particular building or, for example, this girl on the bicycle. But you, when, when you came home, you see like, oh my gosh, it's not the good image because so much power lines which are actually distracting like the view. And uh, inside Erase 2, we had new, two new possibilities. Uh, first, remove power lines. And just press one button and wait and uh, that's it wow. so we get with just one click this result fully automatical so it's completely different image so you can and you and it's work with raw files so actually it's high quality and uh, because luminar neo is designed to bring out of creative possibilities you can actually apply and stack any tools in any order even multiple times and then i can from this tool go for example to sky eye and they say okay i want some magic here maybe starry night and then boom and then uh we have to wait a little bit and then that's it so wow. then you can do all the sky uh, uh, mask refine no 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 send relighting and then relight strange and turn it into the like night a little bit. So there is a lot of creative possibilities here. So you can actually play around and get 
image that you dreamed about like that was before and after are you are you seeing the because when I look at this, especially the power line feature, you know, the power line removal feature, like you were saying one one situation might be someone went out and took a bunch of pictures and they have the perfect picture, but it has power lines in it. So they run that on and they instantly they run that filter or that setting on it and instantly they're gone. I tend to look at it maybe from a, 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 a different perspective of now that you have the software and know what your powers are, certain opportunities present themselves where you wouldn't have taken a photo, you know, a, a photographer wouldn't have taken that photo. Like on that scene, I wouldn't have taken that bike photo because I would have said, oh, wow, uh, it's going to take me forever to take these power lines out of here. So I'm just going to skip this shot. Now I can make the decision to grab the shot and make it amazing later. So kind of factoring in your superpowers you know, into your photography, knowing what powers you have in post-production now, I think is kind of the, you know, I mean, we've been doing that forever, but now it's really easy to say, okay, I can pre-visualize that shot and I know that I'm going to change the sky and get rid of the power lines and relight it and do all these other things versus I'm going to just get the raw data now and try to fix it later. Is that kind of what you guys are thinking? Yeah, uh, I think the mission of this tool is very simple. To bring new new life for your photos that was not edited because you hate to remove power lines. Yeah. I hope a lot of images that you took before will shine and you'll enjoy them. And it, maybe if all future photos, then you can actually present the beauty of the world, how it should be. Uh, yeah. I, I brought some new image here, like even even in, even in there is a so tiny, like, uh, you know, Power lines, they just distract an overall view from the main subject. It's very simple. It's smart enough to, to, to get just what you want. Very simple. And, you know, and it should be maybe in future, like essential process. Even like if I get this complex shot taken somewhere, I don't know, maybe in Europe. Or, uh, so take a look at this. It's it's very complex situation. It's not editable at all in most cases because you have to spend so much time. And uh, it was just one click of the button. You just have to, you know, that's it. It's very that's quick. Crazy. And we went from this to this. And it took them back 100 years. It. it went back 100 years. <laughs> Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe next technology should be to remove all that ugly advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then make it the most beautiful image. <laughs> So that's that's the power lines removal, At, and uh, we, it's unique technology. Uh, no other companies, as far as I know, got this technology which can work fully automatical. Or this case, uh, that's by the way, it's a very funny case. You see this power lines with the light, okay? Uh, or technologies are very smart, and when you remove the power lines, uh, it doesn't take any light sources you can like actually decide what you want to do with the light sources maybe do you want just keep it like mm -hmm. this and like <laughs> ufo flying over there you know yeah. like uh <laughs> some kind of alien ship just landing on that building <laughs> yeah I but then that. you can actually then you can easily erase it with our classical erase tool so you can refine actually and get this result from that to this and even, you know, you see this tiny power lines over there, mm -hmm. it, it was removed. And take a look at the building. <laughs> it removed some power lines Oh, there. it relines from the building as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and all yeah, these yeah. changes so, are, are know, non, are these all non-destructive? Can I go back and later, you know, edit these? Yeah, you can go to edit panel and then, for example, just reset and get your beautiful power lines if you wish to keep them. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Okay. What else? This is great. Uh, okay. Next technology. It's pretty obvious. The next thing that actually people hate to do is to remove all these dust spots. You know, sometimes you get beautiful view and then you actually use your camera, for example, long exposure with a higher f stops and you get this and like you said oh my gosh you, you can't print this image because on the print they will look much more 
they get much more get, they get more visible and that's the big problem for you and yes you can spend hours but i know they'd be fun to remove all this uh dust spots because i love to work on some more creative stuff so in the race next to power lines we have technology remove dust spots and with just one click of the button or i is analyzing all the image and then uh it can actually remove all of them take a look at this it's pretty clean and actually you can use it for like next steps of your editing workflow because uh it's just crazy how much time you'll spend to just make it uh editable image without this technology no for sure yeah that's taking all those spots out is like what maybe you know an hour you know <laughs> or or a half an hour um, depending on how many that many yeah and then on all the images that you shot right so not just this one can you batch that dima so if i if i went out and i yeah. i i took 30 images and they all have dust spots on them can i just say remove dust spots from all these images uh yeah there will be image synchronizing technology like so you can apply a uh, use the edits from one image and then synchronize this edits with the uh, other images we don't have any like special like uh batch processing tool we work more like you know like a dem solution so you can just edit one image and then synchronize the same thing with other images or for example i can want to show you another example here this is very different kind of dust spots it's really like severe case and uh with just one click of the button it's smart enough to get and remove all of them and then you can easily for example remove all this small thing here mm -hmm. and it's pretty quick so you get like the show that you want to get and uh you know for most people i think from now dust spots not really big problem mm -hmm. or for example like like this one can you see any dust spot uh, no i see very one. some time yeah and some tiny you see and yeah the, the cool thing about our technology it can even spot dust spots that you can't even see and the problem is you know you can start edit photo and on later stages when you like bring more structure or sharpness to your image then you can see them and then you have to deal with them but maybe it's too late or even you may edit and never notice them but when you order print and get your print back home you get like uh just ugly image uh, printed with the dust spots so take a look at this we just go here and press remove dust spots and that's it you see over here yeah. that's before and that's after we removed even tiniest dust spots here i want to highlight you here maybe it's all the video compression here but uh the cool thing here or ai technology analyze image on pixel uh level and can spot and remove dust spots which are just not visible by default by human eye and most one thing here uh it's smart enough to differentiate like eagles from dust spots or like airplanes from dust spots because you know eagles airplanes birds are good thing on your image and dust spots are not so good thing no for sure wow so you could just make this part of your your workflow as you bring images in if you're too lazy to clean your sensor or you have been out in the desert or in the jungle and you change lenses in a sandstorm the trip is not over right <laughs> you can you can rely on neo to fix those dust spots in post that's true you know it's it's a, it's it's a big problem for any person who travel you know when you travel i travel a lot and take a lot of photos and like i always get dust spots even if i try to change my lenses uh, in very you know clean rooms uh, it, it still gets some dust spots so 
you know, right now it's much more easier to deal with it. This is great. This is great. Is this new? This is this this dust spot removal technology is not in any previous versions of Luminar, correct? Uh, yes, uh, I show you the new unique technologies, which yeah. will be released uh, at the beginning. But it's not whole story, actually. We will release another part of new technologies a little bit later on. Uh, so we're in the end of Mars or in the middle of the Mars. So we're working on a new technology called AI masking, which uh, will uh, make you possible to select some objects on the image automatically without using like a manual brush like uh sky for adjustment or like uh, animals or cars or grass for example or like man-made roads so there will be a set of different uh, types of objects which can be automatically selected and then uh you can apply edges for this particular object which this technology completely simplified the way how you edit uh, image. So it will be adjustment uh, applied to a particular object, not to the whole image. And then you can use a uh, smart brush. No, not right now, we just think about the object and then you can apply any edits to it fully. And that's future. That's that's coming in the future, not, not for the initial release of, of Nia? Yes, correct. Excellent. And uh, another... Uh, yeah, and another technology is uh, called portrait ground removal, so mm -hmm. uh, and replacement. Uh, because uh, in Luminar Neo, uh, uh, at the release time, we'll get the layers, so you'll be able to apply any adjustments to any layer, and then uh, you can automatically remove the ground from portrait, so you can actually replace the ground or just cut the ground from portrait and then use the image somewhere else. And it will be fully automatic with the eye. And uh, our goal is to make it top notch. I mean, the best in the world at the moment. And we're working very hard to make it on a high level. And, you know, uh, the biggest issue for portrait uh, ground uh, removal or replacement is hair. Mm -hmm. And actually, our idea is to please uh, girls and women because they have a, the biggest hair. My case is very simple, but uh, persons with uh, uh, much more hair, you get a lot of troubles like to fix it in the other software. So we want to make it as much as uh, smart so you can just do it in one click and then get the right results. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about, Dima. I, I've never had any problems with you know, <laughs> with hair on my head. <laughs> it's Hello, easy, brother. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's super easy. You know. Yeah. So uh, our guys are not taking uh, my photos uh, as a training data set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because we're you and I are easy. So what else is that? What else? Because yeah. this this is a lot so far in one release. Is there more? Uh, yeah. So the, in in general, like uh, this product, our uh, ultimate uh, ultimate uh, creativity machine because uh, you can actually do a lot of things very easy and apply like uh, multiple instances of the same tool multiple times, which was not possible before. So, uh, for example, here I can go quickly to enhance AI and then apply accent AI. Then I can apply, then I can go again and apply second instance of the accent AI. And oh. all of these edits are located in uh, here. So actually, you can, I can go back uh, in the order of uh, which I applied uh these tools and and change and so it's non-destructive but mm -hmm. you can do a lot of magical things here i can apply for example multiple vignette then then and then i could do for example like you know, details then i may think okay maybe i want to do more crazy stuff and apply maybe like vignette again to make it even stronger so um the creativity is the limit and the, the bigger thing here, we design it to work 
uh, with the same performance all the time. So uh, like all previous products are getting slower and slower uh, when you use it uh, uh, more, more, more on the same image, uh, same image because we get different workflow when we had to hold in memory all the adjustments that you did with him with this on this particular image, but with Lumina Neo it's completely different. So you actually can uh, very easily uh, apply multiple instances of the same tool or edit like image for hours. The performance will stay the same. So the issue of performance degradation was one of the key results that we wanna. I wanted to achieve with our new engine and we got it and it's and i really proud so you can like spend hours on this image and apply all the tools that you love do crazy stuff do crazy stuff possible and it works perfectly without any performance loss does that and, is there uh, is there a minimum system requirement for that or do you do you in other words do i need to be on an m1 Mac in order for no. that to work, or can I be on a, you know, a less beefy computer? No, uh, actually, there is a, some minimal system requirements, but uh, it doesn't have to use M1. Actually, mm -hmm. all our goal is to make it fast enough to work with uh, like just a medium computer that most of our customers had. So uh, it's something that can actually improve workflow of any ordinary persons, not only the people who actually have the top computers, because uh, the most uh, photographers are using just like uh, medium specification computers to do yeah. their uh, editing. Love it, love it. All right, yeah, let's continue, because at the end, I'm gonna ask you what's next. I have some, I have some feature requests for you as well, so brace for that <laughs> oh cool you know i i love feature requests because you know that that, that that they help us to like think about how we can invent new technologies because you know in all our approach are a little bit different from some other companies like when people asking us to do some particular thing we're thinking about okay uh that's the technology that was actually invented before and most people asking for the same thing that they saw in other products but uh, our goal is to reinvent so we analyze feedback and think about okay can we do something unique here can we actually improve the overall workflow for example with sky replacement when we get feedback from our customers uh, like luminar should have smart brush and we ask next question like, okay, uh, why do you need like a smart brush? And they said, wow, oh, in most cases, people answered to sky replacement, to sky adjustments. Mm -hmm. So we invented two new technologies like sky enhancer and sky replacement. So they don't need to use the brush at all. We get technologies that directly solve their problems. So it's overall uh, approach how we work with the customer feedback so we're always trying to dig deeper and uh, yeah it requires like you know much more time to invent these technologies and bring them to life but you know uh, life is too short to do boring stuff or just the copy of competitors uh we're trying to introduce something unique that was never before here in Absolutely. this world and we're proud of it i love it all right. Well, take us let's take us home on this last shot. What what can you do to this one? Um, a lot of things here. For example, uh, like enhance AI. First, I can with just one slider enhance overall lighting, and then sky enhancer. For example, I can enhance the sky automatically without any like smart brushes here. Or for example, I can enhance the landscape. For example, I can do add a little bit golden hour here and maybe enhance foliage a little bit now it, i get from this result this like pretty quick then i may think okay maybe i want to add some kind of like mood here it's already pretty good 
maybe I'll use something called, I know, maybe, maybe, maybe Santa Barbara. No, I don't like it. Maybe Los Angeles. That's my favorite look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like this tonic. And uh, we get from this to this, but I forgot the most important part here is uh, to crop it. And uh, with the crop we eye, then I can try the eye suggestions for crop. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, they try and, you know, the AI thinks that like this part are boring and uh, this, so we have to be for more focused on uh, uh, particularly this mountain. Okay. Can apply and I get this one. Mm, I think it's pretty good, but I want to adjust a little bit. I don't like this tree. So I removed it and then I like the, this person here. It makes this image uh, more about like not just the flat image, but the story. And uh, so with the eye suggestions and little edits, I get these results like roughly in no time. And uh, I can do much more things here, but uh, I like as it is. Maybe yeah. just a little bit, little bit vignette here, a little bit. And then I think it's, I can go and print it. It's like making, making image editing fun, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it, with, with no limitations. That was the, my main question or one of my main questions was all this stuff that you're doing with the relighting and, and depth map. And that's a lot, a lot of math going on in the background. Um, I was concerned about processor speed. So you're, and I was thinking, yeah, Dima is going to be on a M1 with 900 gigs of RAM in it and, you know, latest graphics coprocessors and all that. But you're saying minimum system requirements for this application are, are relatively modest and you don't need all that, right? Even with all the stuff that you've been showing? Uh, you know, um, the problem is like, uh, Next, we really uh, run all the AI stuff on your local machine. And some of the AI technologies may work a little bit more slow on uh, like more weak computers or work with a little bit lower quality. But uh, it means that like you're completely free to use it multiple times. You don't pay like uh, per image, for example, and it's completely secure. And, uh, the, but the performance itself is not biggest issue, even for like low quality computers. The biggest issue is the performance degradation that we get, uh, with all the version. Like when you start with the image and apply multiple tools, uh, on the same image, overall performance will get lower and lower. Uh, most of the tools work very fast. Some of our tools may require some time to work on some computers, but it's just one step process. Like you just run it, then you can like think about, you know, something that you like, stars more or like your mm -hmm. wife, for example, and then you get result and then you can continue and every single works very fast. That's uniqueness of our new uh, engine. So um, it's always, you know, with the new technologies, the better computer we had, always everything will be faster but yeah. we making everything uh pretty usable even with the uh, medium computer love it love it like, so what, what, like what's next has. what's next for the software right so you know i and obviously i know you can't talk about unreleased you know features and all that but general direction wise considering where the world is going you know with you know, AI or not AI, but uh, VR and AR and the metaverse and all these NFT, all these different things that are kind of, you know, in the public mindset right now. Are, is Skylum looking at that and making moves to kind of intercept that or is it more noise and Skylum is going to remain focused on just, you know, the things that you've, you've shown today, like being the best at image editing and depth and relighting and all that stuff. Uh, you know, um, what we like to do at Skylum is to impress people from time to time. And I, you know, can tell, all the things, but we're working on technologies that was just never before in areas of 
image editing and not only image editing. And uh, with the Luminar Neo uh, Story Simple, it's our major flagship product, which we will uh, improve uh, in next year. And uh, we'll continue use this product as a basement for our new technologies that we will going to bring uh, this year. Because this engine are so flexible, so we can scale it and bring this ideas that we was not possible to bring to life with our old engine. And uh, we looking around another new possibilities, uh, which are here, we're not uh, blind, but you know, uh, our core values are innovations and we don't just don't want to do that. Everybody does just because it's growing. We want to do only things that are unique and can actually uh, advance or possibilities of like of overall industry when you got these ideas then we will go there and we working on like some unique research in some areas which are like uh, i can tell you about but uh, i hope and i sure that we will make people excited love it I love it. So much to talk about. So when when will the, the software be available for, for people to purchase? As we record this, like I said, we're in early February. You said that at the beginning of the interview. Um, is it ready now? Is it going to be ready next month? And, and when? When can we get our hands on it? You know, uh, we're still working on it and uh, it's uh, publicly available uh, demo version at the moment, so people can try it. But the official release will be uh, in the mid February and uh, it will get new features that current version that I showed you doesn't have. For example, uh, presets or and layers. Uh, layers is a really big thing so you can even like do much more than I did before with uh, this product or with Luminary Eye, for example, which doesn't have any layers. And the uh, overall uh, design of layers are made to make you possible do a complex uh, compositing uh, image uh, editing process much more simple. So you can apply multiple layers, apply all the tools with the different uh, adjustments and combine them you can have a lot of layers there and the only limitation is your memory but if you have enough memory you can have a, like 100 layers wow. and do composite work in luminar neo so wow. it's designed to help express your creativity in an easy way with the new technologies that was just invented in the last decade that's crazy. Crazy stuff you guys are cooking up over there. <laughs> this is really cool. Congratulations on, uh, you know, you. continuing to press forward on all this stuff. I know it's, I'm sure it's been difficult, you know, considering what's going on with the, with the, you know, the global pandemic and all that stuff. And, but you guys continue to press forward and, and make releases and innovate and all that. So that in and of itself is amazing. And then putting out great software on top of that. So congratulations on all that. I can't wait to get my hands on it and start diving into it. I do have to give you my feature request though. You ready for it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. Thank you. It's like really, it should be really easy for you to implement this. Um, video. <laughs> I want ah. every, everything that you just showed, Dima, I want that applied to video as well. Everything, you know, relighting, all that stuff. I know processor, you know, all that, but Hey, I'm a consumer. I can ask. I, just, I want all that stuff. Cool. I want Luminar Neo video or motion or something like that. Is that is that possible? Do you think? Yeah, sure. Uh, the biggest issue is just you know uh, you may need more computer power, or maybe we have to do like some cloud infrastructure. But I'd like to tell you that we look in this way very seriously. Last several years nice very good very good all right you heard it here first i asked for it and it may be coming in the future <laughs> so we'll leave it right there dima thank you for coming on i appreciate your time today you know i know things are busy you know as in, you're in a launch month on top of that and you you know you had the time to sit down and chat with me on this stuff i appreciate it and uh we'll leave it right there any any final thoughts before we end the interview 
Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak in your uh, podcast. I'm really proud to talk with you and I will be glad uh, to be invited more and more. <laughs> he, and uh, guys, thank you for uh, uh, you know using our product because you know what we do when I you know make your life better. We always like to invent some cool stuff. We're always trying to play with the new technologies and we're really glad when you appreciate what we are doing. And uh, in the end of the day, it's, I think it's a win-win situation when we can enjoy our products and we can actually see how you uh, achieved your results. And uh, I really can't wait to see what you can do with our a new product in our new. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Dima, thank you. We'll see you next time. This is Twitter. This episode was sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform for used photo and video kit. Visit mpb.com.